Now this video is part two in a series where I'm looking at the Z80 processor, the Z80 CPU, putting it on the oscilloscope and checking what comes out of all of its pins. And on the Z80 of course there's 40 pins, but we don't need to look at all 40 because 16 of them are address lines and 8 of them are the data bus. So, uh, you know, we'll take a brief look at them, but we don't need to look at each one of those individually because that's just simply the address that the CPU wants to look up and the data, the 8-bit data going in and out of the CPU. Of course, there's also the clock, the 5 volts and the ground line, so I'm going to consider those pretty much covered already. Um, the really important pins, the one that I want to actually, the ones that I want to spend time on, are the system control bus. Um, so we've already looked at M1, I've looked at the refresh line and I've looked at the clock in the previous video. So in this video, I'm going to look at the memory request line. So that's memory request, read and write, and the interrelationship between them. So as I did in the previous video, I have written a very short program that just does no operation three times. So nop, 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 and then jump to zero to run in the um, in, on the Z80. So I've programmed that into this EEPROM here. And I'm running that program. Well, it's not a lot to see when you're running a program as simple as that. It doesn't even flash any LEDs. But if we look at it on the oscilloscope, we can see what the memory request line is doing. And the memory request is very busy because memory, memory request is when the CPU is asking for something from memory. So we'd expect it to be pulling the program, the bytes of the program, the individual instructions from the ROM. Um, if we zoom in on one of the instructions, the NOP instruction, we can see that the memory request goes low twice for the NOP instruction, which is perhaps slightly puzzling. And if we look at the jump instruction, the jump instruction is a three-byte instruction, uh, and yet the memory request line goes low four times just to do the jump instruction. So if we look at the read line when we're doing the jump instruction, we can see that read goes low three times exactly where we would expect it to, where it's pulling the first byte, the second byte, and the third byte of the instruction from the ROM. So read and memory request, both going low, indicate that the CPU is reading from memory. So to read a byte of memory from RAM or ROM, the CPU takes memory request and read low simultaneously. And the other spare memory request that takes place is when memory request and refresh go low simultaneously. And this is used by the dynamic RAM refresh system. So the CPU automatically refreshes dynamic RAM chips. But as I've said before in the other video, I don't actually care about the dynamic RAM refresh system because I use static RAM. So this chip here, this 64K RAM is a static RAM. It doesn't need the refresh signal. Uh, and so I'm going to completely ignore refresh signals in the rest of these videos. Now, if we look at the write line when we're running this program, we can see that nothing takes place at all. There's no writing to memory. So we'll have to change the program. So if I edit the program to be nop, 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 and then load the contents of HL with zero, which will write the zero to memory location, well, whatever memory location HL is pointing to, I don't really care what it is at this point, but we'll have it set to 65,000 or something. The Z80 will be going in a loop, doing nothing and just occasionally writing, well, once every time around the loop, writing to memory. And we can see here that the right line does go low in uh, where we would expect it to, corresponding to that load HL, load contents of HL with zero instruction. So it turns out that the interrelationship between memory request, read and write is quite straightforward with just a little bit of extra complexity for the refresh signal. So a memory request and a read together is the CPU reading from memory. One special case of this is memory request read and M1 going low simultaneously, which is the CPU fetching the first byte of an instruction from memory. In the case of a three-byte instruction, this only happens on the first byte. Uh, if memory request and write go low simultaneously, this is writing to memory. And if memory request and refresh go low simultaneously, this is part of the dynamic RAM refresh cycle. So the implication of this is that when you connect up the Z80 pins to a memory chip, 
you only need to connect up the memory request to the chip select pin on your RAM or your ROM. The read from the Z80 to the output enable pin on your RAM or ROM. And if you're writing to RAM, then you need to connect the right pin to the right line of the chip. So the upshot of this is that when the Z80 tries to read from memory, it will chip select your particular RAM chip or your ROM chip and it will take the read line low. So it will output enable the chip and it will read the memory value. And when it's trying to write to memory, it will chip select the chip and it will write to a memory location. And then this extra spare memory request will also um, chip, select the, chip select the chip, but it won't do anything else because it's not simultaneous with a read or a write. So effectively, your RAM chip or your ROM chip will completely ignore that pulse. 